Hey there, Mr. Weaver here, and this is Module 7, Lesson 2, Substitution. After this lesson, you need to be able to solve systems of equations by using the substitution method. Let's learn. Solving systems of equations by substitution. Exact solutions result when algebraic methods are used to solve systems of equations. One algebraic method is called substitution. So here they mean algebraic as in we are solving for a variable, whereas in our last lesson when we saw graphing, we were finding the point of intersection. Without the help of graphing technology like Desmos or a graphing calculator, graphing is actually the hardest method to do, especially when the numbers do not come out perfectly. Substitution is a method we can use to get an exact answer, even if we have a messy fraction or random decimal as one of our x or y values. So here's how the substitution method works. Step one. When necessary, we're going to solve at least one equation for one variable. Most of the time here will already be solved for x or y. If we're not, this probably won't be our best method, but that will be lessons three and four. If one is solved for the variable, so it's y equals something or x equals something, then we're going to substitute that expression into the other equation to replace one of the variables. That's where your substitution comes in. Then we're going to solve for the variable that's left. Once we figured out what x or y is, then we're going to take that value, plug it back in to either equation to solve for the other variable. Then we're going to put our x and our y values together as an ordered pair. As we saw in graphing, it's a coordinate. Example one, solve a system by substitution. Use substitution to solve this system of equations. We have 3x minus y equals negative 7 and y equals 4x plus 11. So remember our goal here to find the solution or to solve a system is to figure out what value of x and what value of y make both equations true at the same time. So for substitution, we're going to take one, plug it into the other. You can see this equation here is already solved where y is by itself. It's telling you what y is equal to. So what we're going to do is take the second part, what that y value is equal to, and plug it in for y in the first equation. So doing that, I would end up with 3x minus, and then instead of y, I plugged in 4x plus 11, and that's going to equal negative 7. Now from there, I'm just solving for x. So this is really negative 1. I'm going to distribute that out. So negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. Negative 1 times 11 is negative 11. So I would end up with minus 4x minus 11. I'm going to combine like terms. So 3x minus 4x is negative 1x, or negative x, minus 11. I can add 11 to both sides to get rid of it off of the left. Then I would end up with negative x equals 4. Finally, I have to either multiply or divide each side by negative 1, and I would end up with negative 4. So x is equal to negative 4. Now that I know that x is negative 4, I'm going to take that negative 4 value and plug it in for x. So here's x. I'm going to put negative 4 in. Here they chose the second equation because it's easier to solve for y since y is already by itself. Whatever you get, that's what y equals. We could do the other one as well. However, we would have to do a little more manipulating to figure out what y equals, and it wouldn't be quite as fast. So plugging in negative 4, 4 times negative 4 is negative 16, plus 11 is negative 5. So my final solution, negative 4 was x, negative 5 was y. My solution is the coordinate negative 4, negative 5. To check our answer, we have a couple ways we can do. We can plug in negative 4 for x and negative 5 for y and see if we get a true statement. Or, since we already know how to solve by graphing, we could double check to see if we get the correct intersection point. If we type in both of these into Desmos, do we get a point where they intersect at negative 4, negative 5? Let's check. In Desmos, if I'm checking my answer, I have my two equations typed in. My solution is where they intersect. They intersected at negative 4, negative 5. That's what I got by substitution. So I must have done the process correctly. Check your understanding. Using the system of equations shown, first, which expression could be substituted for y in the first equation to find the value of x? Second, what is the solution of the system? Please use substitution to solve it rather than graphing. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. First, if we're substituting, we would substitute in 2x plus 2. That's, we can see y equals, so 2x plus 2 is what we'd plug in for y. Then, what is our solution? It would be d1328. To get that, first, we're going to substitute. So 3x, I'm going to plug in for where y was, 2x plus 2. 
That minus 2 is not part of the y, so I would do that. And that all equals negative 17. Now I'm going to distribute, combine like terms, and solve for x. So negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. Negative 2 times positive 2, oops, that had an x, is also minus 4. 3x minus 4x is negative 1x. Minus 4 is equal to negative 17. Add 4 to both sides. We have negative x equals negative 13. So dividing both sides by negative 1, x would be equal to positive 13, which would eliminate a and b. We're just left with c or d. Plugging back in, I'm going to use the second equation, 2 times 13 plus 2. So 2 times 13 is 26, plus 2 is 28. So y was equal to 28, which is d. Example 2, solve and then substitute. Use substitution to solve the system of equations. Here we're given two equations where neither of them are solved for the variable. Now, after lessons three and four, you may choose not to use substitution to solve these. However, you still can. It is one of your options. So I can see in the second equation here that x does not have a coefficient, or I should say the coefficient is one. We can easily solve for x just by subtracting 4y from both sides. So if I subtract 4y from both sides, it's gone off the left. x is by itself. So x is equal to 18 minus 4y. Now, we know that x was equal to this right here. So we're going to take it and plug it in where x was. So 5 times where x was was 18 minus 4y. Now, same as we've been doing, distribute. We'd end up with 90 minus 20y minus 3 more y. Negative 20 minus 3 is negative 23. I'm still going through, just solving for y. I'm going to subtract 90 from both sides and get negative 115. Finally, dividing both sides by negative 23. Then I get 5. So y is equal to 5. Now, just like before, I figured out y first this time. So I'm going to plug in 5 for y. 4 times 5 is 20. So x plus 20 is equal to 18. Subtract 20 from both sides. And x must be negative 2. Be careful this time. When you're finding your solution, your coordinate, make sure you put them in the correct spots. You found 5 first, which is y. That's your second number. Then you found x, which is negative 2. So your solution is negative 2, 5. If you had put 5, negative 2, that is not the correct solution. And if we would plug those back in and check, you would find that you would not get a true statement. So just make sure you're putting them in the correct spot when you're writing your coordinate. And again, you could also check with Desmos to make sure that you have everything the way it should be. Check your understanding. Use substitution to solve the system of equations. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said the coordinate solution is 7, negative 10. So I would solve the second one for x. We'd get x equals negative 13 minus 2y. I'd have to just subtract 2y from both sides. I'm going to plug it in for x. So 5, here's where x was. So negative 13 minus 2y plus 3y equals 5. So I replaced it instead of x. 5 times negative 13 is negative 65. 5 times negative 2y is negative 10y plus the 3y equals 5. Those two together, negative 10 plus 3 is negative 7. If I add 65 to both sides, then I end up with negative 7y equals 70. So dividing by negative 7, y is equal to negative 10, which is good. That's what we've got. Then I'm going to plug it back in. So negative 13 minus 2 times negative 10. Negative 2 times negative 10 is positive 20. So negative 13 plus 20 is equal to 7. Example 3. Use substitution when there are no or many solutions. Just like with graphing, if we solve by substitution, there's also going to be times where there's infinite solutions or no solution. So going through, let's substitute negative 2x minus 4 into the equation. Multiply it out like we were doing. As we go through, combining like terms, we end up with negative 8 equals negative 8. My variable disappeared, so I can't solve for it. Because I can't solve for the variable, that tells me that there's either no solution or many solutions, infinite solutions. This time, because the equation negative 8 equals negative 8 is an identity, right? The number equals itself. There is an infinite number of solutions. When we graph this, it is the same line. And we could verify this by going to Desmos and graphing it. So as you're going through, if your variable cancels out and you get a true statement, 
there's going to be an infinite number of solutions. If you were going through and to get something that was not true, so let's say, for example, you got like two equals negative eight, then because this is not a true statement, that would be your situation where there is no solution. Check your understanding. Choose the correct statement about this system of equations. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said D. This has infinitely many solutions. If we were to plug in, we see Y is solved. So negative X plus two times one half X plus one equals two. I just took that N and plugged it in for Y. Then distributing out, I would end up with two times one half is one X. It's positive. Two times one is two. I end up with negative one X plus one X. Negative one plus one is zero. So I end up with no x's and two equals two. Here's my true statement. It's my identity. So this would have infinite solutions. Example four, write and solve a system of equations. Our real world concept here is tree preservation. A town ordinance defines an adult tree as having a diameter greater than 10 inches and a sapling as having a diameter less than 10 inches. The ordinance requires that on a new building project, two new trees are planted for each adult tree felled, which means cut down and six new trees are planted for each sapling felled. Last year, there were 167 trees felled and the community planted 742 replacement trees. How many of each type of tree were felled? So for this, first, we gotta be able to write our equations. So A can be the number of adult trees and T can be the number of sapling trees that were felled. So we can see in this first one here, we know there were 167 trees felled. So A was adults, T is saplings, those two together equal 167. We also know that 742 trees were planted. Thinking about what was planted and using the same variables we did before, two adult trees and six saplings were planted to equal that 742. So our two equations would be these. Now to solve this, we can use substitution. Our first equation here, a and t both have a coefficient of one. So either one works, let's solve for a. So let's subtract T from both sides. A is equal to 167 minus T. If you wanted to solve for T, it would just be 167 minus A. Now let's just substitute 167 minus T in for A. Then just like we've been doing, distribute out, we end up with 334 minus 2T. Combining the T terms, we have negative 2T plus 6T, which is 4T. Subtracting 334 from both sides, we get 408. Dividing both sides by four, we end up with 102. So T is 102, meaning there were 102 saplings that were felled. Finally, we know that T is 102, so plug that back in. The first equation is the easiest. A plus 102 is 167, so if we subtract that 102 from both sides, A must be equal to 65. So our solution here, A is going to be like X, T is going to be like Y, since that's the order we put them in in the equations. So 65 would be A, 102, T. What this means back in the context, there were 65 adult trees and 102 sapling trees that were felled. And this makes sense because they're not going to chop down parts of trees, so it makes sense that we have whole numbers. If we had got a decimal answer, then we might have to question if we did something correct or not. Check your understanding. Read through the situation to determine how many cups each type of pitcher can hold. Write the two equations first, then solve using substitution. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said that the small pitcher is four cups while the large pitcher is 16 cups. To get this, first we need our two equations. So it says there's two large pitchers. So I'm going to say two L and two small pitchers. So two small pitchers. All together they hold 40. So two large and two small are going to hold 40 cups. The capacity of one large minus one small is 12. So large minus small is 12. 12. Now we got to solve. I'm going to solve for L. So L equals 12 plus S. Now I can plug that in. So I'm going to choose substitution. 2 times 12 plus S plus 2 more S gives us 40. Distribute 24 plus 2 S's plus 2 more S's. So four S's, and then I'm just gonna subtract 24 from both sides. 40 minus 24 is 16. So dividing both sides by four, S must be four. 
what we got. If s is 4, then l minus 4 equals 12. So l must be 16. And I just plugged in 4 for s in that second equation. Or I could have even plugged it into the one that I rearranged. l is equal to 12 plus 4. So then I would get the large picture is 16.